What's good, friends? Ebony Chappelle checking in here with a bittersweet farewell for your podcast listening and viewing pleasure. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of What's Good with Ebony Chappelle. So typically I talk about P-Valley on Mondays, but this week I am talking about P-Valley on a Wednesday. So this is a down in the valley, what's good with Ebony Chappelle mashup of sorts. Um, And this week I am joined by Moni and Kat of the Fake Ass Book Club to talk about all things season two finale for P-Valley. Um, did not intend for that to rhyme, but it's cool. You know, it works. Um, so this season has taken us on a wild ride. We've had fairy tales. We've had nightmares. We've had romance, uh, stories. We've had everything in between. So without further ado, I'm not going to ramble on too much. Oh, before I forget, I'm so bad at this sometimes and I don't know why. (laughs) But before I forget, uh, you can follow me at Ebony the Writer on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can also connect with me on my website, ebonychappelle.com. Um, I am at Ebony the Writer on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Forgot about that one. That's a new one for me. Um, but yeah, you can do that. Like and subscribe, rate and review, follow, do all that good stuff. Leave a comment and let me know what you think about the podcast. Um, but yeah, so I caught up with Moni and Kat of the Fab Podcast to talk about all things P Valley. Um, and yeah, we go there. It's a good conversation, kind of long. So without further ado, let's jump into it. Okay. And I can do my shadow puppets Moni likes so much. Oh, I hate those a lot. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so y'all tell me why when I was on this cave um, experience or excursion or whatever, somebody we were in we were in the cave for easily like 30 to 45 minutes somebody did shadow puppets damn near the whole time and i was like okay did you want to smack them in their face i did for like one second then it's like you know what go away yes it was cute in the beginning and then it got really old and i was like oh but then the person next to me they were in such a mellow mood because they're they were it was a family of them Okay. And somebody okay. said to him, why does such and such keep making shadow puppets? Like, you should tell them to stop. And the person next to me, the mellow one, was like, oh, they're having the time of their life. It doesn't matter. And I was like. It's like, you're well, right. Now, but I still hate it. You know what I mean? I still hate it. But he kind of made me feel like an asshole. Because yeah. I was like, maybe I shouldn't be so upset about this. Yeah. But I was. I was like, all right. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> cut that shit out. You know I mean, what I'm saying? Obnoxious oh. behavior can be kind of hard. Yeah, to deal it, with. it definitely can be. Can. Well, thank for you for your patience, um, um, Ebony girl. Listen, okay, I no, still have my work uniform right. on, uh, cat just now. Okay. <laughs> oh, I came in um, with the sweatshirt on when I saw you were there. I was like, Well, if Moni's changing, I'm changing. Well, and I saw Ebony and I said, Well, damn, I gotta put on some lip gloss now. Oh, damn, damn. <laughs> and I did this Something. because the last time we recorded, <laughs> um, I was like, I don't want to use the video. So I figured you look amazing that I would well, make this time. Yes. Very, very nice. Very nice. See, now look, so I want to point out the fact that we all were influenced by each other to do some extra shit. <laughs> and it's like, well, I just did it for y'all. Well, I did it for you. And that's the story of life, really. We're all yes. doing all this shit for each other. And it's like, you yes. know. Cheers to doing the most. You're welcome. Woo! Cheers. <laughs> Yay! I'm almost gone, Modelo, but I have an extra, I like it. so I'm fine. Okay, mm-hmm. well, what a vibe, you guys! I needed this, Ooh. so this is I'm um, excited. Yes, Same. Ooh. Ooh, so, uh, Lindsay Breath. P Valley, um, P Valley finale, finale. Yes. So, something that the Twitter streets are saying as we oh, just shit. dive right in. Let's go. Um, is that the series finale felt like a season finale? What do y'all think? Wait, about that was that? the series. Fin- no, the excuse end? me. I said it wrong. Oh, somebody is it's the same sentiment, though. But somebody on Twitter said this season finale felt like a series finale. Uh, How would y'all feel, hypothetically speaking? Because right now I am not. (laughs) It's not confirmed that they're going to get another season. Oh, they better. Like as of right now. Oh, is it not? Let, I mean, they don't I'm have a contract Google yet. Really quickly, okay. Yeah, but it hasn't I, been renewed. 
No, I don't believe that they've been renewed yet. I so imagine like, it's an expensive show. Especially this season. Mm-hmm. So, like, yeah. what would y'all do if that was the case? Like, how would y'all feel about the way that things finished, if that's the case? <laughs> I'm a fan of radical acceptance. So, I would just move mm-hmm. into a sense of gratitude for what I had. And because I'm so used to many black shows just being, like, hacked off, you know, like, with no fanfare or conclusion, mm-hmm. I'd just be like, okay. And then just um, uh, maybe write a comic book to wrap things up for myself. Wow. First of all, that is brilliant. <laughs> I didn't know you were. In- so are you into fanfic? Is this something that you've done before? Or would this be like a new endeavor that you would be going into? It would be, an, it's not like I've never written a comic book or mm-hmm. even played out. Like I've never necessarily written out something, but sometimes I do come up with a satisfying conclusion for stuff that I found unsatisfying just so that my mm. brain can accept it. You know what? I mm-hmm. So so let's take a moment and kind of go down a little sidebar with that real quick. Okay. I'm just curious um, of how you guys would like satisfy yourselves with something that ended too soon. So it could be like in this instance, like a TV mm. show, which sidebar, uh, I just read a news article from five hours ago. They still haven't been renewed for a season three. So we're just going to have to wait and see. That feels disrespectful. It does. It feels very disrespectful. I don't like it. Mm. Um, but I'll throw one out there and then. Moni and Kat, if you guys have one for like how you would wrap something that ended like prematurely. So I think about girlfriends and it ended abruptly because it happened during the writer's strike and all that stuff. And then um, they've been talking about Mara Brock Akil doing a movie, but it just never has come to fruition, like kind of in the vein of a Sex in the City movie, like how they did that. It still hasn't happened for girlfriends for some odd reason. But the way that it ended was so abrupt. And I feel like I would want Joan to just make peace with being single. That would be, Mm -hmm. like, one of the things I would definitely hope for. Like, if I could go back and, like, finish it up, I would do that. And then I would also, like, make her get with the people that she, like, really fucked up. Like, Davis, for instance, (laughs) that owned the restaurant. (laughs) I feel like that could have really been something and I would like to see her get like a shot at redemption with that. That's cute. I like that. So just randomness right now. But do you guys have anything like that that you just kind of, if I could have, if I could have wrapped it up differently, I would have did it like this. I think Game of Thrones was like really unsatisfying for me. I've never Um, watched that show. And let me tell you, so I was reluctant about watching it at first because for one, I'm one of those people when everybody likes something because I'm so fucking contrary, which is not one of my better features. I'd be like, nah, I don't want to see it. You know what I mean? But I finally relented. And I remember like the first episode being like so wild that I was like, see, this is why I didn't want to watch this, but I stuck with it. And Mm. it turned out to be, I mean, it was epic. You know what I mean? Like, I, you know, it, it was epic. So I enjoyed it. And to get into it, to finally get into it, to get to the end, and it's like, wah, wah. this is how it ended. <laughs> like it was deeply mm. um, unsatisfying. And I think right now they're working on a prequel that's supposed to come out soon for it, end of the month, which isn't exactly satisfying because we do know how it ends or whatever, or how they presented mm. it at the end. Um, but my husband just asked me today, "Do I want to see it?" And I'm like, you know, I like to stay open. I mean, I, I'm not dying to see it, but I mean, if he turns it on, I'll watch it too, just to see what's going on. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, but like, this is on. Yeah, but I just, I mean, and I don't even know. Like, see, that's the thing that I lack. I feel like is that that extra effort that it takes to reimagine how I would have preferred to it to end. I think if I would have seen you it must more have had recently, people to talk to as a child. So you're I, like, I, I had don't so have many people. Yeah, that. like I had two brothers. I had, yeah, so I mean, we. <laughs> It's it's definitely um yeah, I don't know, just something else, not that. Like it was deeply dissatisfying. Like I was like, yeah, nah, this ain't it. And I probably would have had a better answer if it was closer. Like I haven't seen it in a like in a while. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like if I had just seen it, I might have more, but I just know I ain't like it, but I got over it and moved forward. So if you have time, Moni, I could tell you my ending that I wrote for Game of Thrones. See? Why don't you just tell us right now? I got cat. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Well, how would you yeah. have ended it? So 
what I would have had done for for one, the reason why the show was good at the beginning was Daenerys, like the mother of dragons. Like she was this really fascinating sort of feminist character. She was really strong and she was like very anti-slavery. And her the whole thing is like, I'm going to change Westeros. Like, I don't want to just be on top. I don't want to spin the wheel of power. I want to break the wheel. I was mm-hmm. like, I was like, yeah, I'm like, I dig this or whatever. But then they just wrote her like having a nervous breakdown because she had a bad breakup. And yeah, just like, went all crazy on everybody or whatever. I didn't so. even watch the show and I'm pissed off by that. You I'm should like, be. Yes. It was terrible. That's some weak <laughs> shit. Like a woman that thinks like that, I, mean, I would hope wouldn't be brought down. Was changing the world. Like she That's literally dumb. took down empires. And it was like, <laughs> yeah. oh, it's just, she did, the shit just fizzled out. And the then end. she was like, why won't you be my boyfriend? It's like, and you're so- my auntie. <laughs> oh, yeah, Lord. and it was incestuous. It was I'm gross. your auntie, yes. And yeah. they didn't even have chemistry. It wasn't even believable. Mm-hmm. So, like, so they made her desperate too. Yes, desperate. No, thank you. It, it didn't that make sense. Like, that's the worst part. Like, writing has to make sense. And so, yeah. instead, I would have written it. So, at the end, when she was actually going to take Westeros, like when she rode in on the dragon. Like, because the way that they killed Jamie and Cersei, I thought was very unsatisfying. It was. Them it just having to be a lot more. I wanted specific. her to eat Cersei with one of those dragons and have Jamie watch. Ooh. Yeah. That'd I mean, dope. use Something these dragons. What do we have yes, dragons I'm for? I'm like, on this on that ass. Like, I'm flashing. We never really get to see the dragons eat anybody. They set people on fire, but I wanted to see that. I thought that would have been perfect, especially since mm. Cersei was, like, just such a hater. She was terrible. And yeah. she ruined her life in so many ways. It would have just been much more satisfying for her to, you know, vanquish her enemies and then establish a peaceful democracy in Westeros. Yeah, that was yeah. Her dying, it that, it was just weird. I didn't like that. Yeah, it was weak sauce. Yeah, so yeah, yeah that that's sucks. how we deal with. So to answer your question, if this was the last episode, I would, I would be okay with everything except Keyshawn's story. Listen, when I tell you, I went to sleep worrying, <laughs> and I woke up worrying <sighs> like Keyshawn was my sister or my cousin or someone like. It bothered me to my core and I feel the same. Like I would be at peace with everything else except for that. Like that broke me. Like I saw it coming uh, though. There was a lot of foreshadowing. Yeah, there was. And also I feel like this might sound super fucked up, but the thing I've been thinking about is I feel like she was maybe a hair too confident. To the point where, like, it aired toward, like, okay, now you're less cautious and less sharp about what's going on. You're just like, huh, I'm free. Everything's great. And it's like, you're not there yet. Like, you it ain't, ain't over till it's over. over yeah, yeah. yeah. <sighs> It's she wasn't scared enough. And she's doing a farewell no. tour and stuff. It was like, girl, you girl. were supposed to be gone while the sun was still down. Right. <laughs> like, in my oh. opinion. I mean, but that's just me, though. I don't know. Should we tell the people what happened? Yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Who's Who would it? like to take? Th- yeah. Not me. <laughs> okay. Can you do this so well? Why she don't does. You go please ahead? do. Just I feel like ahead. you're prepared. To she do this, is. You so know, yes. I'm really not. Yes, you are. You know. You mm. saw it. You remembered it. I mean, we saw it, but okay, we go in and we're we're we left out on a cliffhanger last yes, episode um, to be continued because we need to find out who's going to be the mayor of Chuckalisa. And uh, they start well, out er, do- Woodbine. Oh, you're talking about prior and in, <laughs> moving into this episode. Yeah, <laughs> that little. <laughs> this is not my God. moment. <laughs> Go ahead. This is your show. It's kind of your moment, too. That kind of is your turn it out. And listen, I'm so tired. I don't have any home training. Ebony, thank you for having us. I know. (laughs) Again. Y'all are most welcome. Y'all are most welcome. (laughs) We live right now. Yes. (laughs) So, so yeah, we're like bro man from the fifth floor. We just climb in. But, that's what happens when you've been by somebody's place a few times and you just get comfortable you're like girl what you got in the refrigerator right. i'm hungry i can open yeah. it up i'll be like we good no we're coming in because we're like okay who's gonna win and then they do a little switch on you because they make there's like andre's in the lead all night so they make it seem like he's gonna win nope it's pastor bishop so mm. um bishop, uh, Patricia, mayor bishop mayor bishop <laughs> uh this has she here. Is now the mayor of chuck elisa and but they did vote to move the casino in. 
So now Haley's all like, ooh, let me go get my money because now I want I want 10 million. I want 15. And oh girl, that scene, I actually watched that more than once because I kind of <laughs> really enjoyed watching <laughs> Haley get shut down by that old Damn. white bitch. I was like, mm. yeah, you thought like you should have mm, thought you were yeah. so slick, but it's like, yeah, you overplayed your hand. And she so did. I liked I like that she had balls enough to try though. Cause I you don't. never know till you try. You don't well, appreciate that. And here's how I also know like she wasn't <laughs> gonna get an offer because you don't call people and be like, Hey, do you want to buy my land? When people want your land, they reach out to you. That's true. Now that that was some thirsty shit on her part. I was like, girl, why are you calling this lady? That's and, weird. And also, mm. too, the fact that she was so quick to just think they were the only ones who were going to want it. Like, there's going to be other companies that are going to come down and probably want that property. But it doesn't sure. even matter because um, Clifford done bought her out. And she's like, well, I'm not taking the buyout. And Big L are like, yeah, we think you are. Big L and Diamond were like, I don't mm -hmm. care if you think you deserve some interest. Because Uncle Clifford does give her her, her 250 k back. And it's like, thank you very much. And she's like, well, I want interest. And he was like, how about burying those bodies you done, you know, like brought mm -hmm. up in here? Why don't you chill? Because that's how I felt. I was like, yeah, you yeah. need to chill um, yeah, real hard. But then she ends up, you know, she's a scammer at heart. So, you know, she ends up, well, that's at the end. And so the um, Uncle Clifford and Lil' Murder, they kind of, you know, break up or what, you know, Lil' Murder's like, I got to go back on tour like tomorrow. And he's like, oh, well, I see what you're about. Uh, Miss Ernestine comes home. Uh, she survived the Rona. I Yay. was right. I was right. I knew it. I was like, mm. I'm not counting her out yet. I was like, Miss Ernestine's still in there. So we still get some Miss Lil' Loretta Divine, but she's still coughing. She's not out really out of the woods. They probably did kind of release her a little bit earlier. I wouldn't be surprised mm -hmm. if she ended up with pneumonia or something, but she was um, probably giving them hell. They was ready for her to go home. <laughs> oh, yeah. She's gonna beat up yeah. every CNA, every damn mm -hmm. assistant, done cussed out every doctor. Like, let's like, like go, go home, home and die. <laughs> Please, because no. you're gonna make all her work, uh, work, uh, staff quit. They ain't gonna want to be here but no more. Listen. She tested negative, so she gets to go home. Um, oh, one of my favorite scenes too. was this last episode of this. Oh, that was last episode. We didn't get to talk about it, but when Haley and Andre come in the hotel room and his wife is in there and yeah, catches was, well quote unquote catches them but it's kind of like don't nobody really I mean why don't no you more. just get your cheeks uh clapped <laughs> in, at your house <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, she was getting fed okay like so, that's all I'm gonna say on that I'm not gonna exactly. say no details but Listen. yeah that's what was going on with her Yee. and also I'm just like since you ain't talked to, you ain't seen that no this is some country shit you ain't seen not hair there. nor hide <laughs> on this man in several weeks probably months they probably ain't talking what? nothing you can't come in and no. be like oh so this is what you're doing it's like don't Girl. Know, what? you knew this is what Girl. i was doing stop playing like, yeah. <laughs> get right on out of here oh we also learned that um Haley's pregnant now with andre twins. doesn't know that yet but with twin well with that's twins. what whisper said we don't know for sure I think but she right, whisper though. but yeah whisper she's on some other stuff so yeah she's got her you know a uh, little bun in the oven but she hasn't told anybody yet and uh who, who am i leaving out sadie's now, like I said, if this is how it ended for Sadie's, I would be fine. Because Sadie's, mm -hmm. uh, she um, d decides to retire, which she prefers with a little murder. And she's like, that was my last dance. I decided not to tell nobody. I'm walking away. I'm, I'm just out the game. Because she reminds me of like, a uh, what was that, Brett Favre? Who played for you know when a quarterback plays for too long and or any blow, sports you know, icon? It, it's like please, and they end up getting yeah, real hurt and yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was starting mm -hmm. to look like that. So she decides to walk away, and she's just like, "I'm just going to make my own way in this world. I'm gonna figure it out." But then she ends up getting a residual check from a uh, coach's wife from Farrah. Sidebar: That's the least that Heffa could have did. I mean, at the very least, I'm like, I mean, but she didn't have to. She really she didn't. didn't. I was glad she did do that too. I, I was like glad she did like. too. I was. I thought that was an integrity move, and it, and it co-signs my idea that even though in the present right now stripping isn't a venerated art, I feel like in the future it will be because it's obviously yeah. art. 
and the fact that be. it was framed that way i enjoyed that they did that in the show mm-hmm. and she was like you know the fact that she did that she was able to get her studio she got her daughter back like and that was something nice i was like you know that's what's up for uh her mama for you know working that out with shell or whatever mm-hmm. or scam, really scamming shell be like yeah i'll take her it's like Psh, i'm about to i got two new jobs I ain't doing i'm that. the mayor bishop it's I'm like i already mayor. raised my child i'm not dealing with this 14 year old work so yeah i was happy with how things ended for sadie's but Keyshawn, Keyshawn, Keyshawn. Mm. so when when do you want to talk about whisper and roulette before we talk about Keyshawn oh, and yes. diamond well diamond kind of goes with Keyshawn, though he but whisper does. and roulette yeah and this is why they needed to sell the paint, though, because you got they're selling pussy and pills Ooh, out of there. And like I said, it's then? about to be what did I say? It was going to be a cascading pit of felonies. <laughs> and <laughs> that, and that's it's going to be on off. some it's going to be on some uh, players club stuff. Yes. The whole club is going to combust. With yeah. this madness that they got going on, it's gonna be it's gonna be everybody's horrible. doing too goddamn. They're doing too, too much. Y'all doing too much. Like it's too much. Like yeah, so. Roulette's doing a lot of drugs and selling ass. Yeah. So mm-hmm. and which is uh, that is not that is against Uncle Clifford's rules. But once again, he's not really doing a great job of running the pink right now. He is very distracted and understandably yeah. so with his with grandmother with little murder. You know, with his own stuff, like there's so much stuff going on that he's not really running the pink right now. The pink is kind of running. That's what Haley was doing. Right. That was the only thing she was really good at. She obviously had the password. She was really good at that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She was. She was. But but also, too, she didn't really have the integrity. Now that I'm kind of like. I didn't like her from the start. I told both of y'all that. I didn't like that. I just, I don't like her character. I just did not like her. I don't think I'd be friendly in real life. And, Mm -hmm. or I would be friendly with her, but I would know I couldn't trust her. Like, she just seems. Yeah, no, she can't get too close. She's, yeah, Yeah. because it's like, you don't, I don't like the way Mm -hmm. you move. You're not, you know what I'm saying? And it's like, you attached yourself to something that wasn't even yours and you basically felt like you could just come in and not consider, you know what I'm saying? Cause there's a way to do yeah. that. You can sometimes talk people. You it's how you do stuff. It's just how she mm-hmm. came in. And I just didn't like, I, it felt kind of disrespectful to uncle Clifford. Like you thought mm-hmm. you were helping and then you ended up playing yourself. So I was happy to see that. Um, yeah. And but at the same time, I mean, like, you know, and I mean, you she, had us catch a body up here, too. Like, yeah, I feel I like mean, you're not repentant enough about that. Like, you should oh, be a no. little more sorry no. about that. Yeah. In my it's opinion. like she felt entitled she, to there's their that protection air. and their support. Yeah. Yes, Where yes, it's yes, like yes. you really uh, got a lot of people caught up. So yeah, she, if she just humbled herself a bit and took a little bit more accountability, I think her character could turn a corner for me and I could be like, All right, I guess she's cool. Because I'm pretty sure yeah. she knows there's pills going through there, too, and just doesn't care. Oh, she, right. She's like, yeah, she peeped it because she's very observant as a result of being having lived the life that she lived. Because we don't know what her and Montavious, right, mm-hmm. her baby daddy. Yeah, we don't know what kind of things they were into together before their relationship went sour. Knowing that he's a part of either a gang and or a secret order, which we have. I'm gonna quite say a criminal, criminal syndicate. A criminal syndicate, yeah. So I'm like, either they're in the underground or they're don't. I mean, she's a master scammer uh, type shit. Yeah, so, so she is. So I she mean... learned that shit probably through her relationship with him. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, she's too observant a person to have not peeped that they're selling pills out of the pink, and she just don't mm-hmm. give a damn. I, I too, I, I feel like she definitely got off as smooth as one could in that type of situation yeah. the things that made her redeemable for me was when she went out of her way to support other people so like the stuff she did to support Keyshawn, that indeed that was dope Haley's yeah character yeah. to me otherwise yeah without that it's it was a few of them nice. moments there's a few mm-hmm. but that, that's it. that was dope it, yeah that was nice that was yeah. nice to see. that like was that. and that was it yeah. Um, because <laughs> yeah, she really got on my nerves this episode. I was like, "Girl, you need to mm, really just simmer down, now. Simmer simmer down. Down. very much so." Mm-hmm. But yeah, that. Uh, but yeah, roulette. Basically, she's running a brothel out of the pink mm. right now, yeah, which is. is very dangerous. Like you're not. Yep. Sub- I mean, it's one thing if there's, a, but she is organized it so now you know like i said the feds could build a case like there's all kinds like now you're sex trafficking which is not dancing so um that's that's definitely going to be so that's why we need another season because like i need to see how this plays out 
Um, yeah. I do. I don't like whisper. Um, I don't. I don't trust her whole little thing. Yeah. Like she's. I'm disappointed that whisper flipped so quickly in the way that she did. But I also feel like it might be a trauma response because even mm -hmm. though somebody like her being so alert and aware and like knowing better or quote unquote knowing better, having a quote unquote moral compass, you know, because that's subjective depending on who you talk to. But some stuff, I'm just like, I'm kind of disappointed in her because I would expect someone coming from the thought process she comes from to not involve herself in that type of shit. Like taking advantage mm. of other people um when they're weak because i'm like your spirit don't feel worried about that like yeah you all with the universe and everything. And yeah right. like, well, your little oh, chris black girl I twirl that around yes because i'm sure it's gonna be like stop, stop <laughs> right doing that. it'll be pointing at her like bitch you're wrong <laughs> <laughs> you did wrong like, okay you know you're wrong i yeah, would like her better up. without the contacts like if she didn't that have those that, that, yeah, that a distraction. I would like her way better without that. But then it kind of does work for the, you know what I mean? Because I'm like, you would. <laughs> but so, also there's better ones that there are way better. I mean, Look, to me, she ain't making enough money yet. You see, yeah. oh girl, what did she do? As soon as she bust down that car, she went and upgraded everything. Yes, she did. Roulette yes. went upgraded head to toe. I was about to say, because everything They ain't making enough money yet. I disagree. I was about to say when I was wearing some light ass contacts, it was still I didn't have money, and it was still better than that. So, <laughs> so it's a, it's a tone thing. So the coloring is off. Is the problem because it's, it, it's all one color. Like yeah. the whole point yeah. of those things is supposed to be like different. But maybe that's what Contrast. she's going for. She looks like a wolf. Creepy. It scares yeah, me. Yeah. She might want to be a wolf. Yeah, that might be the theme. Yeah, that might be like that. that wolf. They need to look that out at that wolf. <laughs> yeah, she wolf. is. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Anyway, but yeah, they're like they're seducing and scheming, and so now in the worst way. <laughs> in the worst Nothing way. Nothing positive about that. Okay, and that guy he... finally got with Roulette too, though. He did. He was like, "What's his name? What is you? His name? I just been calling him that the white boy who's guy? pushing the pills. Oh, He's working with. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He finally. Uh, Gidget's baby daddy. Girl. Messy. Or ex boyfriend. Oh, yeah. That's he right. Was mm -hmm. Wait, where's ex. Gidget been? She moved away. Oh, she yeah, did good she for her. In, like Texas or something. Okay, yeah. good. <laughs> good for her. Out of there. Um, yeah. Okay, but uh, Keyshawn. Keyshawn, Keyshawn, Keyshawn. Oh, so Keyshawn, she's got this big plan. She's got the Murakami, uh, Louis Vuitton, full of money, the car. She's ready to go. She's got everything figured out. She said goodbye to everybody. She's like, I'm going to pick my kids up from my sisters. Actually, here's the other thing, too, because she got the plan from Haley. The idea of this was not a good plan for escaping an abuser, first and foremost. What because, are the things that oh, were wrong about this plan, in your opinion? Okay, th thank you for that, Ebony, because I've had to escape some abusers. So, um, and you do have to make a safety plan and you have to protect yourself and your kids. So just skipping the country, because it sounds like she was just going to leave the country because she had to get passports, like Haley helped her get passports. And so, which is also, she must have done it on some slick shit because you can't get a passport for your child without both parents. Like, I've had to do that. Mm. It's quite Even a hassle. if you're not married to the other person? Yes. Damn! You mm. both have to be present to yep. get the passport. Or you have to go to court and get an affidavit and present evidence that you can't get a hold of the other parent. And, and like, and it goes to the point of like, you have to print something. Like, I think there's something you have to even publish in the newspaper. Like there's uh, things you have to make like a oh, public, yeah, announcement. public notice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, there's mm -hmm. so much stuff you have to do. So the fact that she probably has fraudulent papers on these kids, not, not a good look. And then, and also too, because it's not the right thing to do. Like, even if that is your abuser, that is still their father. So you're still kidnapping your kids. So you're, mm. you're. And you picked his ass. Let's you picked forget. his ass. Yeah, exactly. You picked him. So like now you have to figure out how to do this because as we find out, if you don't move within the law, you're going to get fucked up, especially when your, your baby daddy is a white man and you are a dark skinned black woman in Mississippi. So mm -hmm. like you have to come up with a plan so that you can be successful. You just can't operate off of feelings. So first and foremost, that was just a terrible plan. And then 
on top of that, you didn't, you weren't even executing it properly. Like I said, you should have been, as soon as you left the club, went and got those kids before the sun came up, before he could get a whiff of anything that was going on, if that's what you were going to do. But she goes to her sister's house and her evil ass stepmama's over there had called her baby daddy. He came over and got the kids and then filed a CPS, uh, child protective services on her and was going to try to flip the game, even though he's been abusing the kids, he told them it was her. And that mm -hmm. was when I had to pause the <laughs> show mm -hmm. and do a significant amount of self-care because this has happened to me. And oh I was my like, my first, my first ex-husband did file a CPS report on me with our son because he was trying to get custody because he didn't want to pay child support. So wow. you and it's so frustrating because there's such a history of child separation in this mm -hmm. country. And the mm -hmm. fact that this person who was supposed to love you would do that to you and your child because they don't even care. They're hurting the child. I always said. Oh, no, term, they don't give a damn when they mm -hmm. do stuff like that. They absolutely care nothing about the child at yes. all. Mm -hmm. And so and obviously he doesn't care because he's been abusing them. And mm -hmm. so, and I, I have this term where like, um, it, when the, you get these young girls having babies so early, like you're just breeding hostages at this point. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. Like it's you, true. You are. Breeding no, it, it, it absolutely is mm -hmm. true. Yeah. There's a reason why true. that happens systemically like it does. You know what I'm yeah. saying? You yeah. can't grab me at the, at my big age. You know what I'm saying? Unless I. Unless there's some kind of reason, not psychological reason, but maybe there's some kind of history that I have where my my mental, you know how you meet older people and you're like, you're stuck back here somewhere. Like you're not quite yeah. there. But just if you're functioning at age level, like who's talking you into this dumb shit? You know what yeah. I mean? Like you have to she's already been believe. Over it. She would have been yeah. gone if it hadn't been for the kids. Yep. Like she's yeah. already over him. Like she just, especially when he was about to burn her face with that iron. I knew that's when she was like, mm -mm, cause now oh, yeah, with because the her, listen, her vanity is very, very important to her. Like that is a deep piece, which for me, I feel like, okay, you're owning something that you feel like you have agency over and it can be your escape route. Like absolutely 100%. But him praying on it is like, he, he knows that too. Because he talk about it all the time. Mm -hmm. He's obsessed with the way she looks, too. So I'm just mm -hmm. like, but when that's the really only too thing far gone. that anybody ever talks about when it comes to her, like it's always her looks, you know, it's always mm -hmm. that. And I think like you pin your hat on that when people go hard and stuff. And it, it's like, well, I guess this is it. Nobody's telling her how smart she is or how, you know what I mean? Like every all of all of the stuff that people mention about her is always geared around her her appearance so i think she's putting all yeah. her eggs in that basket like well this is all i got you know yeah uh, and she yeah. is also because i'm just like doing the math in my head from when she had the pregnancy and how old the oldest baby is now is she like maybe 21 22 right probably. now probably so she can't so, be more than hold on Siri, okay so let's let's back that up with the math because she was in really? high school right yes yeah she was a senior the first baby she she might have been a senior. Well, so no, because wouldn't Derek be older than her? Yeah. So maybe a junior? She had to be, you know what I mean? Like she was She's super young. Yeah. She is. Because that baby, because be. their babies are barely verbal. Cause that's the other thing. The other one's like yes. three, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. So there because the kids can't really explain what's going on. Because if you could mm -hmm. just, you know no, what I mean? Like they those don't know. Yeah. So Anyway, I had to pause that part because I had a physical reaction to when you when the CPS people were there and yeah, yeah having those white people come in your home and like go through your stuff and go through the stuff with you like you're some like shitty parent and there's nothing you can really do. You just have to cooperate. Mm -hmm. But Keyshawn, once again, very young girl who's been experiencing a lot of trauma lately and from what we've seen hasn't gotten any help. Mm -mm. Uh, has a very violent reaction, which is predictable, but severely handicapped her case because now she's proving to these people that she's violent. Mm -hmm. And because she tries to attack Derek and then she just ends up with a knee in her back and ends up locked up 
calling Diamond. But now you've perfectly set up for him to get custody, to go back to his parents. His parents will probably be like, yay, these kids are light enough that we are, we can accept them. And then you can get rid of that, mm-hmm. you know, pick any that you were trying to bring around. And we can all just be happy. And she can just be the stripper that we just don't talk about. Yeah. And and it, it was just so crushing. But then she reaches out to Diamond. And he can't help it. He love, you know, he goes running to her and then come mm. to find out Big Bone. She, you know, she's been peeping what's going on. And she she's been knowing he was the one who uh uh because she yeah. was in the gang with uh Hallie's ex. And so finally, mm. now that her feelings are hurt enough, she's like, Well, let's go after him now. Cause it's it's it sounds yeah. like she wasn't gonna do nothing as long as he kept you Well, know. I f- I felt like she was this is the weird part. So from the beginning. I felt extremely uncomfortable about Big Bone. And somebody posted on social and they were like, I never liked her. And I was like, me neither. And when it, when I first felt that way, I was like, is that my internalized misogyny? Like, what is that? Like, why do I not like this girl? So I had to check myself because I had even said it on the pod a few times. I was like, I don't know what it is, but I don't trust her. I don't trust her. Mm-hmm. And I think it was that when I really think about it, I think it was the fact that she consistently challenged Diamond's um, boundaries. Mm. Like he had specific boundaries about stuff and I felt like she kept pressing it. But then she did it in other arenas too. Like she kept pressing people's boundaries of like what was acceptable. And I was like, you just got here. Like, why are you doing that? And I was like, something about this makes me feel like these are very deliberate choices and not just like, oh, I'm goofy and I don't give a damn way, but more in a like, I don't give a fuck. I do what I want. She, she wasn't giving goofy. She was no, giving. Not, no. She was giving habitual line stepper in the words of <laughs> yes. Charlie Murphy. Okay, this yes. bitch was crossing lines. Yes. Cause, I, Cause I was gonna. I'm glad you mentioned the fact that it wasn't just with Diamond. Like this bitch. How, why are you back here serving drinks? Like they hired her on as a dancer. And then, no, yeah. no, 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 no. She was hired about? as a bartender, was a bartender and she was dancing. So it was something back yeah. where she wasn't supposed to be doing. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I do remember that. And so it was, like you said, it was a sort of the through line that her character just was like, yeah, I don't, I, you know, I'm doing whatever I want to do. So I didn't, mm-hmm. I, I kind of felt that that energy as well. Like they were, I was like, they're building to something with her. Cause this yep. feels a little bit like there's something going on. So yeah, I'm, I'm, well, they already showed her like, you know, peeping out the ring, you know, that he mm-hmm. was kind of doing the hoodoo on and stuff like that. So come to, so it ended up cause I, I put that in my notes. I haven't even been following my notes, but I was like, no, don't put diamond in the trunk. Like diamond was really one of my favorite characters and he didn't end up dead, but it looks like it's going that route. Yeah. I don't know. So why the I episode know. ends with out of it. You think so? Absolutely. No, I think he'll be able to get out of it because you like Diamond was getting ready to do some shit. Like you, we see him at the trunk. He's going to war. Going to prepare for whatever Keyshawn asked him to do, which is basically like off my baby daddy. Like get rid of you know, story. she didn't say them words. Which she was, was like, once again a terrible move. <laughs> like mm-hmm. calling him and saying the wolf swallows the key. Yeah, that was some dumb shit. I was like, I don't know why. That's one of the first people phone calls when you, you get locked up, all your phone calls are monitored. Like yeah. if somebody ends up dead after a confrontation you had with them after you got locked up, like it's bump, bump, bump. Well, and they can yeah. decode your little fairy tale message you told him. Yeah. They're not Girl, dumb. <laughs> you know, we know what that means, Keyshawn. Nice try. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It was can I also say, too, one of the things I was maddest about with the Keyshawn thing was that she had that trunk full of money, and you know Derek got that, too. Bitch. Girl, sure that's one of the first things I thought when I saw her flip out because, now, can we talk about the way that they did that scene? Thank you, Ebony. I was like, I didn't know when to chime in about this. This scene got me together. I'm curious to know what you're going to say. I'm sure so, I'm the way they did the scene, I it's like they, I felt like I was put, like, in her place so like I felt the anger welling up in me and I was like I know exactly what's getting ready to happen she is about to lose her shit on this Mm. dude for flipping the story around and I'm like that is textbook what abusers do when you're in front of other people and it's like Oh, I'm let the crazy me make one. you out to look like the fucking crazy person. Like you're the one that's behind all this shit, and I'm just gonna play it cool and then just let you react, and then the story becomes, I'm the crazy. Oh, bitch. that person has the problem, mm-hmm. and it's like no, no, that's not mm-hmm. even it. They were pushed to the complete edge. Yeah. So 
I just, the way they did that was so just, I, it was unsettling. It was. It was, it was the angles of the camera. I loved how, yep. because like when they were building up to how angry she was, like, I mean, she went from being confused. Like, I don't know what the fuck is going on. I don't understand even why you're here. And you can just see her wheels turning. Like, what are you talking about? And she's like, well, wait a minute. And then as the lady's talking to her, the lady wasn't saying the stuff that Keyshawn was hearing, right? They have her yeah. saying like, you're, you ain't shit. Like you're a stripper. She, you're hearing all of the internal dialogue that basically what her mind is translating, you know, which is why I think that that scene was powerful because you're getting her into her internal dialogue. You're mm -hmm. getting this white lady in her face. Like how many times, you know what I'm saying? Have you, you see, you know, uh, the stereotypical, oh, this raggedy ass black bitch don't know how to take care of her kids. CPS yeah, is involved. That, I mean, that, that's a chief stereotype around black women and her kids. Yes. And yeah. so it was just like all the heaviness of that. And then they kept showing Derek's face closer and closer. And he has this Grinch fucking like smug, like, bitch, I got you face. And they just keep closing up on it. And it was like, oh my God, I want to jump through the screen and rip his yeah. stupid eyeballs out his face. And yep. like you said, it was like a crescendo of just fucking anger because, you know, she realized like, I have no control in this situation. And like Kat said, I mean, like when you're working on pure adrenaline, like when you, when you recognize that this is what you're blowing my life up right now, bitch, you who have been, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, yeah, she mm -hmm. just did. I mean, she went the fuck off and she hit yep. the police officer on accident, just trying to like that get to his ass. Out of him. And oh, that's the thing, right. too. That's like, good. what Hell were you? No. And and once again, because I want to really emphasize how young this girl is. Like, yeah, your prefrontal cortex isn't developed yet. And also, too, you you're not that far off from having that last baby. Like, your brain mm -hmm. goes through so much mm -hmm. with childbirth it and sure having is. them so close together. Some like, hormones, all boy. Of, it's no joke it's and so everything that she's been through not getting any help the fact that she hasn't been documenting anything because Which that's the other thing, thing that's so important oh my goodness there's absolutely no documentation outside the fact that she took the baby to the doctor that had the bruises and they documented that and whatever was wrong with the baby's elbow like and that's the only documentation is that you took your child in and then you came back you know, home with the baby and whatever. It's so it's just, it's so many issues there. Um I think about and this just popped in my head, but I think about the fact that Keyshawn probably hadn't been to sleep from the night before being at work. Mm -hmm. So it's like you've been at the pink. You're up on this high, like you had the great dance, like everything <laughs> went fabulous. You're on this mm -hmm. high. You just got on a fresh new fit. You like, I'm ready to go. Go to your mom's house, to your sister's house, see your evil stepmom there. All that shit happens. Now you're getting to the house. And she was probably on the whole way there, like, thinking, like, how am I going to finesse this motherfucker so that I can still get out of here with the baby? It's like, da, da, da. She comes in. Oh, Derek, I know what you're thinking, but boom. Mm -hmm. And then There's the whole this. scene is cut on Ooh. some other shit because this mm -hmm. random person is there. And it's just this whole situation. So, like it just bothers me so much and i'm so so frustrated that <laughs> like things that happen the way they did like it literally bothered me like i woke up in the morning thinking oh. about it like if she would have just did this <laughs> if this would have just happened da, 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 which is like the <sighs> thing that happens in traumatic situations and then you think about like there's so many people like Keyshawn that had this plan like we're like, oh, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do that. Mm -hmm. And I thought it was foolproof, boy. I thought it. I thought they yeah. was out of there. Yeah, and for whatever reason, it doesn't work because sometimes. And I think that's one of the challenging things about the show, especially these last few episodes. Because when I think about common themes, I think about um, like they've had a few. This has come up a few times of like, how far are you willing to go to get what you want? Like, I feel like that is something that has come up in a few of the different episodes. And then in this one, it's like, you don't always get what you, like, everybody doesn't get what they want. Like, Uncle Clifford and Lil Murda, like, that whole situation. Oh, that was. Play it did. Yeah. That was sweet. I, we can talk about that one because we haven't talked about it yet. But, like, that was sweet. But in the Keyshawn situation, it's like, she didn't get to get what she wanted. 
And it's just like so frustrating because I'm like, why though? Like, it's that's life, right? Like that's the interesting yeah. thing that I noticed too. Just the contrast, the highs and the lows, right? Like you know, yeah. you saw some people getting like having these highs and these resolutions, mm -hmm. and then you saw these cliffhangers or you saw these uh things happening where you're like, damn, everything is all bad with this with this situation. But like that yeah. is the crazy shit about life because all of that shit exists at the same time on the same. It that it's literally mm -hmm. that all the time, you know what I'm saying? Like it's literally yep. that all the time. So oh, that hill, yeah. So, but that's what I'm makes it so compelling, though, because it like I feel like I was on a roller coaster. Like I was like, yep. you think you're going this way, and I was like, skirt, you're turning. Skirt. I was like, whoa, hold on, wait a minute. Like, like you mm -hmm. said, it was a lot of highs and lows. Like, so if you were, if you're, if you've been watching this show, and you've been invested in these characters and their stories, like you're all in. like by the time you see this episode, like you're all in. And I promise mm -hmm. you, I was like. Oh my God! Yeah, it was just, it, it was, was a wild. lot. It was a whole bunch going on. But yeah, what I would have wanted though, to do yeah. is see Keyshawn use that money. Like if she had just gotten through the, like you said, she's so sleep deprived, which is very real. And if she had just gotten through that without flipping out, like you could have taken the money and got a lawyer. Like mm, if yeah. I can say anything, if any ears can hear this, oh, like gosh, if right. you're in situations like this, stay calm and get a lawyer because this is going to be a long fight. And like expensive. that's the thing. It's going to be a long, expensive fight. And so when I went through the similar situation with my ex, like I had to get a lawyer and it went on for, you know, it, it went on for years. Everybody I know who's wow. been in a situation like that, that it's yeah. legit been years. But I won thousands. But you know, like, like, and thousands I, of dollars I, I'm, I'm, yeah. you know, like I, I, but I had to scrap Mm -hmm. But like smart, though, like it wasn't cussing him out or, you know, mm -hmm. trying to make his life difficult. Like I could not give him give an inch like and actually that's what they want. Like when you because that I mean, it's like because get help, like understand what's happening to you. This isn't like a new phenomenon. Like when you understand what's happening and what you can expect and all of this stuff is actually very predictable, like you can cut it off and it'll be. And what they want is for you to flip off. Like Derek was so happy when she did that. You know what I mean? Oh, for sure. For sure. Stupid thing. Yeah. So like if you can as much as you can stay calm, not give them anything like I to this day, I really don't speak to either of my exes. Like we communicate through emails and text messages because mm -hmm. it doesn't leave room for emotion. And so yeah. if you can do everything you can to take the emotion out of it and just keep the focus on the kid on the children mm -hmm. or the child and being like making sure that they're OK, they understand what's going on facilitating their relationship with the other parent because ultimately it doesn't really matter. That's their parent. They're going to love them. That's why I was saying her plan was bad. Like taking your kids out of his life or taking their father out of their life forever. Even though he was abusive to yeah. the children. Yeah. Like that can still be a type of abuse that you're, you know what I mean? Because if there's, they can see it and make those decisions for themselves, that's totally different than being like, you don't even get to like, like, make him have to have supervised visitations. Now, the way this is played yeah. out, she's going to have to have supervised visitations with them. But it's like, but mm -hmm. do it. Like, even though that hurts, like, just do it. Like, like you, oh, that bothered me. So I really, really struggled with that. And just because it was traumatic, after I finished it, I had to watch something happy and I watched the new Miss Pat show. And it helped. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah. Like Good. you do need a palate cleanser after this. Cause I was like, uh -huh. seriously, like you, like you said, the way that that scene was structured was to be deeply traumatic yeah. and it yeah. worked. Mm -hmm. It worked. I'm, I'm definitely with you on that cat. When, after I watched something deeply troubling, I have to watch something funny. So there's certain things that I don't even watch like around bedtime. I just know it's not appropriate for me. Like I can't. Because my sleep is going to be disturbed by this. So, like, I can't mm. even, I can't even fuck around. But, It'll yeah. Haunt. I just yeah. go right to sleep, guys. But a happy part was that, you <laughs> know, little murder. You got a strong brain. You got just strong tired. Brain no, I'm just it. tired. It'd just be like, you know. Uh, but it, it was cut nice this shit off. <laughs> that uh, little murder decided not to go on tour with. Uh, Talk about a palate Tina's cleanser. A, uh, Tina Megan Snow. the Stallion's character, Tina, Tina Snow. Snow. Yeah, cute. Tina that Snow. They cute. decided he decided not to go on tour with her. He's like, I'm gonna make this work with Uncle Clifford. Also so you think because, that was a good idea? 
No, I don't think Little Murder has a bunch of good ideas because he murdered yeah. that guy. Like he's big murder now. Like you know, Listen, like he, he stresses me know. out. I feel like he does. He yeah, he's too volatile. Yeah, he's, he also he's, he's very one. volatile right now. I think he's emotionally imbalanced. Yeah. Um, I think that it their their love affair is very sweet, but also I'm just like doomed. Lamarcus, little murder, big murder, whatever we calling him, is very young, very inexperienced in this area of his life. And when he was talking about, I'm not gonna go on that tour. I need to wait till my own situation comes. This, that, and the other. I'm sitting there like, no, babe, this you is your sound chance. You're tripping. You're tripping. You sound foolish. And it's yeah. crazy because, like, I have been in dating scenarios where people have made like decisions like that or started to, and they alerted me. And I'm like, what you're not going to do is that. Mm-mm. Uh-uh. Because I'm not going to be the one that's going to sit back and hear you bitch and complain about it later that oh i should have done nah i want you to do every single thing you want to do absolutely and when i see you in five years and you still ain't did shit i'm gonna be like and And maybe (laughs) like i invested in this success or maybe i'll I'll congratulate you good job either way i like i'm with you i just felt like that was really dumb i'm like it's cute and sweet and everything but i just kind of felt like yeah it's this cute Uh, and sweet like it's a little bit but like you could have just wrote each other like y'all had been doing that was cute more romantic yeah. sometimes the longing part because again like the reality yes. of real romance and love and shit like that day like in how they out. feel right then and it's all oh, this playing house bullshit you making me uh sausages and all this shit in the morning sausages like, and, nigga, and chicken and dressing and yams and now when nigga's sitting down there waiting for it and you like shit i'm tired like you tell me how cute that is then okay how about ah, me then listen, right. when the honey is moves not over <laughs> he's not prepared as much as he think he is i'm like baby you no. are not ready no, no definitely too young not. you definitely you just got not. off another hot uh escapade a little while ago too so it's yes. not giving um uh, sustainability no and also too you did just catch a body so maybe leave town for a while and maybe not like stop the music and do a whole rap song about seven pounds of pressure killing a motherfucker. I, I knew not. it. I was like, I know the next song he does is going to be about killing somebody because that's what these little kids do now in their raps. And we yep. may have touched on that. Why are you talking about your crimes in your music? Listen, it's the passion. What the it's hell? the unbridled passion of it all. all tripping, like all they're passionate in the streets, in the bedroom, in the studio. It's just, it's uncontrolled passion. It's the dumbest shit ever. It's it is very dumb. Killed. And I'm a, I'm a <laughs> deeply, I appreciate passion as a thing. I, you know, really appreciate it. However, I'm just like, at a certain point in life, you have to get that shit in check. Gotta and I feel you. like Uncle Clifford has lived long enough to understand how to do that. So he's trying he's to help Lamarcus. But then at the same the time, dinner. yeah, so, you know, been around long enough to understand how that works. But then at the same time, LaMarcus is so, like, just out here. And also, I feel like Uncle Clifford probably really enjoys, as much as they would like to keep LaMarcus on the straight and narrow. I was like, I understand that Uncle Clifford probably enjoys being able to live like this for one of the first, like, how often has this been able to happen? That they've been able to experience, like, real life together. Really, yeah, Yeah. Like, I just thought that whole thing was beautiful. Like, them eating breakfast, cute. Uncle Clifford in his robe. And I mean, they was cute. They was, was cute like, and everything, but uh, it's not sustainable. That's the only thing. It's, it's not. Like, it's mm. not. But it, I did like how it's it sort true. of highlighted the fact that like a lot of people in their situations don't get to realize, you know, their love lives in that traditional in sense that, that they make yeah. seem like the only way that you can have a love life. And it's like, mm-hmm. I mean... I just want people to feel like you can write your own shit. Like it doesn't always look like we're here together every day in the same house doing shit. Like you can still have affection and love for somebody and let them like at the end of the day, you don't ever really have anybody. You can have that everyday bullshit with somebody and they leave you. You know what I'm saying? After years of building like a family, in the same house. or that, you know what I'm saying? So it's just yeah. like if you have that love and affection for somebody, if you're willing to love them with an open hand, I mean, like, shit, where does that actually go if it's actual love? Anytime you see him, any city he's in, I'm like, shit, I'm pulling up. What city y'all going in next? I'll be at the hotel waiting on you. Shit. That's fun. That, you can do that. Like, there's so much creativity. There's just so many things. But and I get I also it. think about the other parts of romance. Like, when y'all mentioned earlier about you can write each other letters, I'm just like, 
Motherfuckers don't even write love letters no I know, more. I'm like, old I was sending postcards. <laughs> like, yeah, that shit cute. is beautiful. It's like, cute. that's mm, like, like having their exterior. handwriting and knowing yeah. that, like, yeah. they sat down and stopped. Like, that's the other part too. Like, yeah. the thoughtfulness involved in it, and mm-hmm. the and the reflection and the meditation of it all, of that feeling that you yeah. feel for somebody. Like, that's what that's what you want, and that's what you don't get when you're in front of somebody every day, unless you're trying super fucking hard. And after, you I sure? mean, anything you do for a long time, it, there's fatigue. There's fatigue. I don't know. I, I, yeah. Yeah. I feel I like, I don't know. I think you up texts are enough for me. That's you up right. texts. Hey, <laughs> no, I'm, I'm kidding. you right now. Jokes. I was going to say, you're more than a you up text. She's dumb. Jokes. You up? Jokes. <laughs> oh, no. God. No, no. no. <laughs> I'm kidding. I love a, a well written word. I've always been a sucker for, uh, I, yeah. I have a personal theory. That's why women date uh, men in jail, it's the only way they can get love letters. Hell yeah. And, and all the niggas' attention, damn. too. Yo. Where else to go? Real talk. Shout like, out to Sheree. Do y'all watch Real Housewives of Atlanta? Listen, I, I was just talking about that. Years, yes, girl, but I do know that is her dude still locked up. Yeah, okay. They well, they are, I don't think they're now. together anymore. No, no, they broke up, and everybody was talking about because he's the he's out of prison, right? They and they were supposed up. to meet. When I'm gonna make this real quick because it's not Please. what we're talking about. I know, right? Uh, <laughs> she had went to New York City, and he lives in Philly. So okay. they had made plans for them to meet and like spend, you know, a little evening together or whatever on the East Coast. This dude stands her up, like never comes through. And then it's this whole story like, oh, if he would have came, it would have been a parole violation, this, this and that. But he like let her get all the way there. She had to find that out through another party. Then he low key like tried to ghost her. Like it turned to this messy thing. And everybody was talking about it. And it was like, man, Sheree fell in love with that jail talk. And I was like, what is jail talk? Yeah, and right there. there we go. Like breaking it down. Like he could talk to her out multiple times a day. Mm-hmm. And like. You always know where he about is. All that. And they could talk about all their dreams together. And like build up this big fantasy about this what it's going to be. Yeah. And I'm like, nah, son. Like I do. I, I have communicated with people that are incarcerated. But I'm very like. I'm, I'm a supportive human being. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm there for you. I, absolutely. That's I just it. you got to be real. Like I'm not though. even fucking around. Come on, like, you're there, and I'm Yo, here. Listen, no, church I don't even like do texting excessively with people like that I've met. I'm like, so when are we gonna hang out in person? Because I'm not, I'm not about to be sending you pages of text every day. Like that's no, and because it's that was different. A book I read called "The Prisoner's Wife," and it was about wow. a woman who had, you know, courted a man who's jail and ended up marrying him while he was in jail and stuff like that. And yeah. uh, another big part of it, and actually, this was in uh, they touched on this on Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt, which was a comedy, but they touched on real life. I stuff. love that freaking show. It's so You're amazing. Silly. It's about it's escaping so. abuse cycles. Yes, which they is, were in a whole cult. The Mo brand. Yes, but <laughs> also to the um, woman who was trying to marry Reverend Wayne, Gary Wayne, yes. and um, was trying to get Kimmy to divorce him. She was like, basically because he can't abuse me from prison. Like, I know he can't throw a bowl of cereal in my face in the morning or you know, t- you know, like, I mean, he was still a, I mean, he was still abusing her, but he couldn't yes. physically abuse her because he was in jail. So you're able to feel safe in a relationship with a man sometimes when they're locked up. But also, too, there was a lot of competition. She's like, I gotta lock this thing down. He's got a lot of women who are writing him. I was like, and that is oh. the thing. That is the thing. Like, if you are yeah. popular for whatever reason, you become popular in that way while incarcerated. You have a lot of women that want you. Like, one day I'm going to tell this story about, I'm going to keep it really short because I can't even tell the whole story. You know we can't but do I that, had somebody, Don't even try it. <laughs> I had somebody be upset with me about um, their significant other that was incarcerated. And I was like, excuse me? Like. Okay. I was like, I, I am not trying to take this person away from you. Oh, like, just the fact that you're communicating. Yes, and person. I was okay. like, okay. it threw me like, off, and I was like, okay, I'm gonna try not to be judgmental, but also, right, I was like, girl. those were her <laughs> letters. You know what I'm saying? Like he could have been yeah. spending that time writing her a letter. Or whatever. But see, this is the no. thing, though. I was like, you do understand we are arguing about someone that neither one of us 
even yeah. hypothetically if i was trying love like, like let's be for real I, that part for me i was like this is not for me mm-hmm. i am so outside of the realm of this like understanding like i don't even understand what we're upset about right now i could I mean, not i could uh, not explain it to you i don't know i i don't see the allure myself um i don't want to be in front of you every single second i don't need all of your fucking attention like let's just talk about that for a second like yeah. i don't understand the need for all of like you want somebody constantly like constantly constantly like that don't that's i think we have been sold that that's love though obsession that's like some people we've been sold that bill it's super unhealthy and also i know there's a lot of a lot of fucking pressure it's a lot of pressure and there's a lot of church oh, that like, you're gonna ministry. notice something you don't like real quick if you yeah. keep paying attention so I'm like, listen I you pay attention and i need to see you in person because you can say anything in the letter i feel like learn i learned that when i was like a teenager talking to like this is before the internet and all that stuff and you'd be on the phone talking to somebody who goes to a different school or some shit like that oh and, you and you're all bop, 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 bop. and then you yeah. see him in person and it's like crickets and you're like mm-hmm. yeah. and so i yeah. learned very quickly like yeah. mm, it's not the same like the chemistry is not the same we can mm-hmm. create some Something that doesn't really exist when we're not in front of each other and that same chemistry exactly. is not here when we're sitting in front of each other just not and so yeah i mean for grown people to really be thinking like oh i'm really getting like this is a catch i was speaking of a catch because that's how catfishing works like i think people just like they're oh, having Lord. a relationship by themselves which is like, another thing that's i don't what understand it is. yeah and i watch pretty- that show a lot and i saw I every too. episode i'd be like i don't get it every time Oh, every time <laughs> but you're just having an imaginary friend like basically that you're just mm-hmm. sort of it's an extension of an imaginary friend a little bit though right like i just feel like i hate like Wait, I, hate, I miss that it's it's what it's sad a lot oh yeah sad, sad. <laughs> yeah sad a lot of it because it yeah. just highlights the fact that like we're so wired for connection that sometimes we're willing to make absolute fools of ourselves and not in the best way because that's what love is i mean you're just embarrassing yourself daily because you never know when a motherfucker might just be like yeah you know so you're rolling the dice but it's like not yeah. on some dumb shit though not on like i'm just saying like i'm not putting all my chips on this guy who's been incarcerated and i'm not saying that there aren't good men who are incarcerated no yeah can't come out and be that. whatever right you know what i'm saying but we're talking about that stereotypical sort of story of like now you know this you know when he get out y'all done seen uh the show what's that one show uh love after lockup love at, i, I, I actually really haven't never seen that, that shit. oh i've, I've never it. seen it no and I it's can't. And I it's everything you it. think it is, Ebony. It's everything mm-hmm. you think it is. Okay, and more. Mm-hmm. I it's imagine. crazy. It's instant jealousy. It's instant. Oh, she's trying to control me. You want this nigga to buy you a diamond ring? He ain't got a job. He just got a <laughs> jail. He just got out of prison. Like, where do you expect this? He don't even got a car. Girl. Listen, and then when he's hanging out <laughs> with people, you mad? The girls look. I said this right here feels like high school times a, a million. And, yeah, and honestly, I feel like that has a lot to do with it, you know, is people sometimes like wanting to latch on to this idea of what they always wanted, you know. And I think a lot of times our ideas around what love is and what romance should be are based on things we experience as teenagers. So sometimes people try to go back and like recreate that feeling some kind of way. Like, well, I want to feel like I did. Shit. Ideas are easier to like, love than people. Let me just yeah. put that out there. It's that's, easy to listen, love an idea because that shit is a, a a vapor in your mind. It's a figment of your imagination. It's not yeah. real. You know what I'm saying? Like, so try yeah. loving an actual person. That shit's hard and it takes a lot of work. And it's there's nothing simple about that shit. And that includes you. You know what I'm saying? You <laughs> to your people own forget, self. Yes, and anybody people forget else. That stuff. They forget that the stuff. Fact? And it's like, so you also have you to deal with, like Thank how you, you deal with yourself. <laughs> Hello. And Here. also the things that you want other people to accept. Mm-hmm. It's like, have you been really real about what those things are? Have you seen yourself? You know? <laughs> have you been around yourself? You know what I mean? Like be, yeah. So it's just, it's a complicated thing, but relationships, I do think that they get packaged to us in a certain way. And it's easier to sell mm-hmm. that package when you're young, when you're shut off or when, you know what I'm saying? When you just don't have any sort of a context, which is why, you know, Kat was saying about breeding uh, hostages, you know, a lot of that kind of stuff, you know, they, it happens everywhere. This ain't exclusive to here. You know, young women are mm-hmm. always, the the go-to because they're moldable you can you know they're you know and by the time they realize they've been duped it's like now i'm trapped here with two fucking kids with a dude who beats my ass what the fuck and then now i I have to nap right and your personal development is stunning when you have kids and you have to focus on being somebody's mom 
your ultimate focus isn't self-actualization. Sorry, hon. That's a pretty <laughs> high. That's like, that is not on the list. Like you're trying to figure that's out. That's a luxury at that point. Yo, man, yeah, it's a luxury. A one. Especially. Yeah, because yeah, your so. kids are not. What did that, uh, what was that in Trevor Noah's book when he was talking about his mom, when she said she wanted to have a baby because she wanted someone to love her. And instead she gave birth to the most selfish person on the planet who only <laughs> yes. thinks about themselves. What a joke. Everything was just me, shit. me, me. It's like, yeah, that's how that goes. Like, so you you're and, and just hearing why... that doesn't even give it justice like i need you to understand <laughs> hearing that it's like yes i understand that but until it's you it's like <laughs> oh like for real though oh, like for real for real like yeah yeah it's more than so a but and also so for uncle clifford and little murder's relationship like even though it is very nice because that was very satisfying conclusion that they were able to finally just tell the world like it doesn't have to be a sneaky link like we actually it's more than just sex we mm -hmm. really do care about each other i and, thought that was um, a very beautiful moment that was nice but yeah, like you said the family and everybody was cool like nobody party, honey yeah, yeah. Oh, somebody like Miss Ernestine and that uh at the dude she well, keeps calling to uh, Wakanda or T'Challa. Uganda. Uganda. <laughs> yeah, her little African boyfriend she was flirting with. That was super was cute. cute. I really yes. I liked that little part of the thing. She was like, oh hey. Like mm -hmm. she's she was very, very fun with that. But all around, man, what a show. They did a lot. They took us what lots of places. A <laughs> oh, Ebony, thank you. Like, I've given us the excuse to talk about them once more. Okay. I mean, because yeah. we had to wrap it up because this was, that was, I was just, I was floored. Mm -hmm. But also, yeah. too, I tried to, when I was feeling bad, I was like, just think about Mercedes. Think about Mercedes. Like, <sighs> She was beautiful. <laughs> that article was dope. Her. Oh, and the t-shirt she had on it. too. I don't know who made that, but I loved it. Black men deserve to grow old. Mm -hmm. Oh, that cute. was a beautiful t-shirt. I love how Mercedes is so like deliberate, but also subtle in her choices when it comes to like the politics of it all. Because there, that was another theme throughout the show. Like we dealt with COVID throughout the show. And we also dealt with like the uprisings and like social justice actions that were happening at the time, but it was all weaved in in very like interesting ways throughout the show. So I appreciate that Mercedes, as she is, was more like I'm a show than top. Like mm -hmm. even when she is doing anything flashy, like when she first went to go see um, Coach at the uh, penthouse and she was taking a picture, she said, "Here I am acting like damn Keyshawn," and she mm -hmm. stops because she's mm -hmm. like, "That's not me. Like I'm right, not. Right, right, I'm not right, a flashy." Right like type of girl mm -hmm. like that mm -hmm. so i appreciate it um just the different ways that she showed up i love that she finally got her gym and finally got her last dance i'm like if don't nothing else happen mercedes yep. got that so thank and you. her and daughter. daughter and her daughter <laughs> and her daughter <laughs> I don't forgot like, it. it shows y'all where my her head baby is. kids ass. Her, but but to me, like that <laughs> part because to me the the child yeah. separation because it reminded me like when they um uh forty five was doing the child separation policy at the border as a deterrent. Yes. Uh, um, and people are like, oh, this isn't America. I'm like, this is very America. This is how you control people, and this has very much been done to black women for a long readings, time. Right? Yes. Yeah, and, and they would do that, like, to top, it was very, this was a tactic to have you have these children to keep you from running off, or mm -hmm. to, Control. like, have, like, like, they'll sell off your children except one just to keep you tied to the land, so, and it would work, like, you know what I mean, right. it's like, this is my lat, you know, to keep you, to, to have that kind of control and stuff like that, and that's how, you know, we're seeing, you know, the the characters on the show being manipulated and mm -hmm. to me it's something that's not talked about enough like for a character like Keyshawn how was she to know that she was falling into that trap yeah you know what I mean and it's a it's such a common one so it's like who yeah. is telling her I mean there's Haley who's trying to help her but once again Haley's scamming ass she's not even doing it right like she did it wrong like when she ran off with her daughter like I understand like hers was a little different because she was in an underground world so she couldn't really go the get a protective order do a you know um 
a safety plan. Um, mm-hmm. Cause even giving her the gun, even though like in TV and movies that works in real life, they do not advise you to do that. You You're going to snatch that gun out of your little weak wrist. You are so, <laughs> when I was doing my safety plan, possible. you get, you are so much higher on the risk of being murdered. If anybody in the house owns a gun, if mm-hmm. he owns a gun, if you have a gun, your likelihood of being shot to death goes up so high. So that wasn't even really like, even though Hallie was trying to help her, she really wasn't giving her the moves. Like, I don't think even, you know, like there's organizations that are really out here to try to help. You know, I Mm -hmm. love that at the end of the show where they would always give the list of the hotlines and stuff for help. Like yes. So nobody would go and replicate no shit that they seen on TV. Mm -hmm. Yes. Like, get help like yeah. there's nothing wrong and that's the thing it is hard because you're like oh this is my fault I got myself into this I gotta get myself out true mm-hmm. but you you deserve help like you didn't get into yeah. the situation by yourself so you can get some help getting out of it so, well and it yeah. ends up being irrelevant because the people who love you would rather see you alive like at the end of the day yeah. it's not just about you you know what I'm saying it's about your kids and it's about mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying the people who love you too so because we're human through each other right like our relationships yeah. are the most important thing so like if you you don't yeah. exist anymore that still if that affects everybody yeah. and so for me it's like that help needs to come a lot before in the form of conversations you know with our young men and women about you know consent and just being able to take you know like when we talk about um you know so on the on the girls end you know like building up their self-esteem and preparing them for yeah. like men who will be enamored with maybe your looks and you know warning signals to look out for and men like if a girl's not interested in you like learning how to take being let down like not every mm-hmm. girl's gonna like you and that's okay like you just have to like yourself you have to be secure I mean all of this breeds from ego and insecurity and absolutely I think that's the larger conversation and that's the underlying sort of like you know uh when you want to control somebody when you want them you know like when you're going this hard to kind of like manipulate situations or make yourself feel a way through other people um mm-hmm. you know that all just comes from fear and insecurity and that nothing good comes from those two things like nothing at all I mean maybe I mean fear sometimes in some instances but you know what I mean in this context Mm -hmm. so yeah the help is there but um you know I don't know I just like the conversation needs to start from day one you know what I mean it does a lot earlier Mm -hmm. a lot because a lot of us grow up in environments where we are taught and a lot of popular culture has taught um, lessons about relationships for so long that is completely unhealthy oh, yeah. and it's like steeped in like some deep deep like troubling like thought processes and belief systems so I feel like we really are at a point as a society now where we have to do something different with how we communicate with each other on that um, yeah because this this shit will just continue to perpetuate itself like yeah. over and over and over again um, a lot of people coming from very traumatic backgrounds will find themselves in these situations with each other and mm-hmm. think, oh, this is how we live. This is how mm-hmm. this is how we operate with each other, because this is what I saw as being normalized, you mm-hmm. know, so it's. Yeah, man. And uh, I mean, I think we can yeah. always talk ourselves into, you know, feeling like, oh, well, I deserve this, you know, because even if maybe you're not from a troubled background and you're more affluent. You know, maybe you're like, well, I'm complaining about this. Maybe this isn't so bad. Like, you're kind of like, maybe this is, you know, like, or maybe it's worth it because I have these things. And so he doesn't mean it only happens when he's drunk. Like you, like we trick Mm -hmm. ourselves into, we talk ourselves out of our own humanity all the fucking time. And it can happen to anybody. Yeah, it can happen to anybody because everybody has their has Amen. their trigger like yep. this will flip your switch and the next thing you know you will be in a really fucked up situation Absolutely. but we all have our thing that does yes. that mm-hmm. because I even think about like for instance like growing up I saw certain things and I was like I would never do this this and that or like if I saw this <laughs> then I would do this thing right uh-huh and then you get older and it's like okay it might not show up in that exact way but it'll show up in a different way and next thing you know you're sitting there and you're like Bitch, how in the hell? Okay, now I get mm. it. How yeah, did I wind up here? Mm. Like, because what life. is happening? Because <laughs> life. Know? because mm-hmm. life and that's the thing yeah. that should extend grace like we should all have grace for each other because at the end for of the sure. day like all that judgmental bullshit about oh you know I'm a stripper and I you know and maybe I deserve like all of that stuff is again like us 
beating ourselves up for having a human experience. And I think yeah. that, you know, that's what it allows me to be in a space where I'm not a, I'm not super judgmental. I mean, like I talk my shit, but when it really comes down to it though, like mm-hmm. I just see people and like, if somebody needs help or if somebody's in a situation and you're in a, and you're in a position to help them, uh, especially when it comes to something like that, you know, it's like, how you, yeah. you know, this is not the time to be telling you about, Oh, all the shit you could have did right it's like, like, well, we just blah, 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 blah. yeah like that's not <laughs> yeah that's not bottom the right line time. Is, is like yeah so um it is important to like again we talked about this before building it's the community building man like it's mm-hmm. the people around you you know what I'm saying it's it's all of it's all of those things all together so work on that ebony you know so i know you got the keys to the city i need you to get that popping real quick <laughs> listen Simple and i'm six, just girl i'm gonna shout out i'm like <laughs> lord that is a whole lot <laughs> I'm going to shout out uh, Danielle uh, Smith, who does a lot of domestic violence work in the city that we that we are in in Indianapolis. So Mm. I'm going to drop a link in the show notes to her work. Um, But she's done a lot um, around domestic violence. Like one of the things I thought was pretty cool. She mentioned that happened during COVID. She was wearing a mask that had her uh, hotline because she has her own hotline printed on a mask. And she was in a grocery store. And somebody saw it and had referred it to mm-hmm. someone else. And then it just kind of like, you know, and she is someone that's a survivor herself. So mm-hmm. um, it's just, it's really cool to see how she's been able to like use the thing that she knows and leverage that to help support other people going through that problem because it's so prevalent um out here so yeah shout out to people like her so Absolutely, i'll just yeah. i'll just help support people that's actually doing it that know what the hell they doing okay so i'll take that too. yeah Thank yes you. <laughs> <laughs> to the, like to the experts right. yes. <laughs> cheers cheers to the experts, yes. to the experts. Cheers to staying in our lane and, yeah. and doing that Absolutely, yeah. man. Gotta gotta lend support for that kind of stuff, though. That's super yeah. dope. But like, I you know, this is why I love having these kind of conversations, though. This is why this is so fun because it's like you know something. Somebody's artistic vision inspires so many important conversations, and yes. you know it makes you. It, I, I think it's just good to be thoughtful. You know what I'm saying about the world around you and different scenarios, and to and to pick people's brains about like how they think and feel about it, because it keeps you know like it does affect our collective consciousness, and that's really the mm-hmm. only way we can sort of, you know, hope to work through some of these uh, issues ultimately and stuff like that. But uh, mm-hmm. but at the end of the day, you know, the entertainment factor was just you know it was mwah, mwah, oh, couture and oh, the music, the flowers like that was a oh, hell of fabulous. a that was a hell of a um a season finale like that was really 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 good so very well done not disappointing not like game of thrones at all no not at all like Mm -hmm. that man that was really really good and so i mean if i don't see the conclusion i guess i'm gonna look at cat's paintings or what she comes up with listen i'll just add um, stuff to what she be talking about (laughs) yeah and then we can just do like podcast episodes where we talk about the comic book like we can just do that we're gonna keep the we're gonna keep the legend of p valley alive no matter what you know an animator maybe somebody can animate that for us it could be there we go Mm -hmm. that'd be cute we're coming up with so many things i love are we'll put a pin in it (laughs) brainstorming (laughs) yes come back to this later oh gosh well yes moni and kat it's always a pleasure um talking with y'all thank you Evan. all the time every time every single time and this is awesome <laughs> it was the therapy i needed my blood pressure's down now even though right? we talked about some heavy stuff i'm like this was I my time it. so thank you for uh, for giving me a space to be present with you guys and have a conversation it's always super fun for me too so yes cheers to the beautiful one to the future i know cheers i'm all empty to, but still you know, <laughs> the storytellers <laughs> Ooh, and to the ones a doing left. a good work out here right now. So yes. Yes. <laughs> thank you again for having us too. Oh, and fake ass book club. Yes, uh, we're <laughs> the fake ass book club. Look, get, that wasn't weird. Shout outs before we, uh, <laughs> before we wrap. Yes. Absolutely, guys. Check us out. Subtle we're around. Yeah, that was that night. was. I wasn't panicky at all. It and wasn't. also, too, uh, your listeners are gonna be tired of hearing from us, okay? Because they're gonna be like, "Why you guys got them on your show?" They'll be alright. Yeah, that'll be cool. <laughs> it's like Ebony. We like it more when it's just you know, 
<laughs> no, get used they, to it, guys. No, I'm just kidding. Listen, I think they just like when I actually put out content. So there's that's that's the plus. Cheers it's like, oh, that. there's a thing for to, for us to listen to. So how about that? Yeah, mm-hmm. that's what's I'll, that's I'll that's uh that. 40 of y'all. Yeah, <laughs> okay, right. Girl, we got about three of us. So far. <laughs> we yeah, need a dope listen, podcast y'all. to step to. Hey. Listen, it, it's Back. good. It's, oh, it's fun times. Yeah, man. All right, but thank you again. It's always a blessing. Absolutely. You are very welcome and likewise. Appreciate y'all. <laughs> All right, friends. Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of What's Good with Ebony Chappelle. A huge shout out to Moni and Kat of the Fake Ass Book Club podcast. I will drop a link to their show in the show notes so that you can stay connected. As always, have a great time, y'all, and a positive life. Peace.